High road is the first thing that comes to my mind in our industry. He always took the high road. Well, I think as soon as Art enters the room, everybody knows he's the smartest person. <laughs> Art's the guy that's sitting on the front of his chair. He's leaning forward and he's focusing intently on whatever we're doing in the room. He struck me as being for a very creative engineer. Um, very competent in his, in his profession and easy to work with. He's the guy whose attention you do not lose. Even, even if you're a little long-winded, he's, he's tracking. I think the word that comes to mind with art is humility, but it goes so much deeper than that. Once you get to know art, it's never about him, it's never about money, it's always about, I mean, it's just being creative and being helpful to people. Everybody says art is a great guy. And it's true, many great guys in Portland, but only one Art Johnson. Art has no ego. He is a very modest man. He has the highest integrity. He's very honest and open. He has a genuine love of people. I was born and raised in Berkeley, California. My mother went to Cal, my grandmother went to Cal. <laughs> so I lived in Berkeley and until I graduated from, from college. I applied for, to Cal when I graduated from high school. It's the only school I applied to. I went to Berkeley High School, they, had, they were on the semester system. So I graduated from high school in January. And I'd skipped a grade, so I was younger than, than most people and started in the engineering program at Berkeley. And I got a call one day from a high school friend that said uh, the California Department of Transportation is hiring engineers for the summer. Well, I got, the, I got a job and they didn't. The second summer, they asked me if I wanted to come back to work and I said yes, I filled out the paperwork and they said there's something wrong, you made a mistake. <laughs> What's that? Well, it says you're 18 years old, yeah. But you worked last summer and you can't work until you're 18. <laughs> I remember I got an offer from a, a well-known, still around engineering firm for $455 a month. And Boeing offered $1,000 a month. So it seemed kind of exciting to move there. You know, once you get used to the rain in Seattle, it's a pretty nice place. <laughs> I worked there six years. The first five years when it was called the Structural Test Group, which is not unlike you know, a consulting engineer. In 1970, I decided I wanted out. And the economy up there was terrible. So I, you know, I started answering ads in the, there were a few ads in the paper. I talked with Harvey Patelko at KPFF, and I really liked him. A year later, he called and says, come on in, we want to talk to you. Turns out he had to pay a placement fee if he hired me within a year after talking to me because it was the placement agency that had set us up so he waited a little over a year and so I worked in Seattle for three years and then I moved moved down to Portland. I guess 40 years ago <laughs> 1974 I started talking to other structural engineering firms consulting firms around town and nobody would talk to me because I was aerospace, an aerospace refugee. And Art Wood uh, talked to me because he had the same background, obviously. Like the Outliers book, I think it was the right place at the right time, perfect timing for me uh, and for Art too, I, I think. The urban renewal was just taken off in Portland and it was, it was magical, the, the timing. My first job in Portland was the Benjamin Franklin Plaza. We were then hired to do the World Trade Center, PGE's headquarters. We were also working on a project. At the time, it was called Flanders Square. Um, it's the gas company headquarters, One Pacific Square. And shortly after that, there was a whole, there was a building boom in Portland. <laughs> See, or Orbanco Building, uh, One Main Place, KOIN Center, all started, you know, within a few years of moving down. He uh, was 
a unique high-powered engineer when he came to town. He very soon proved that he had this uncanny sensibility for architectural design. Of course, the architects in town were all taken by this and uh, so he stormed the city of Portland, or rather the architects' offices of the city of Portland by his personality. We were once talking over drinks or something and he said, you know, I really like architects better than engineers. And I said, yeah, me too. And just, they're much more interesting people, much more diverse, uh, much more big thinkers uh, and just fun to be around. And I think that translated into a very good uh, business model. He was very interested in the overseas work. We had done a number of projects in the Sudan and uh, we felt we had to pay back something to the government of Sudan. And, and we offered a training program uh, of six months for three architects in our office in Portland. He said, you know what? I will give you two architects and one engineer and you will find out why. So I called uh, out next morning and told him, you have to help me. Joachim dropped me in Art's office at eight o'clock in the morning. Art was not there. So I, here is this Sudanese guy that know nothing about this place. My first time in the United States. Walked in, asked about Art, he wasn't there, and I just sat and waited for him. Half an hour later, this tall blonde guy walks in and everybody said, that's Art. <laughs> and that's how we met. The funny thing was that Jaffa had many of similar capabilities as Art. So Art turned into the perfect mentor. I could tell you for a fact, I would probably not be sitting talking to you if it wasn't for Art. I mean, my whole career, it started with Art. And I stayed because of Art, because we became friends, we became partners, we did everything together. We disagreed on things, we yelled at each other, but we're always friends. And I could always n depend on him, and I know he's, he's got my back. And so it was, it was just a great partnership. He didn't discriminate against anybody. I mean, if you look at the, at the staff in, in Portland here at, at KPFF, it's probably the most diverse staff of any, any company I can think of. Women, people from all over the, the world uh, work here. And that's a testament to Art, I think, and his open-mindedness. Uh, if you can do the job, you got it. There's a few projects that were special, and you know, I get asked that question often. There's three that I always mention. One is Dornbecker's Children's Hospital. Where do you build it? There's no space out there, so it spans the canyon. It's really a bridge with a building on it. There's a group called FEDIC, it's an international association of consulting engineers. They had their 100th anniversary last year and they asked each member organization, there's 100 and some countries that belong, to submit projects to be considered as one of the top projects for the past 100 years. Dornbecker was the only building from the United States that was honored. The convention center, and you know the story behind the towers. The twin spires that you see were originally structural masts and we were going to suspend the roof. The roof system became too light and uplift was, was the biggest problem in doing that. So we went to a more conventional long span system but the spires remained because in the thinking of us and the committee, they became kind of the icon. He would accept my and others' ideas and run with them, and if they didn't work, we'd try something else. He was very, very easy to work with. The Moyer Chapel out at the grotto is a totally different kind of project, but Tom Moyer uh, sold his theaters shortly before the building was built, and his wife died shortly thereafter. Wanted to do something for her, so they agreed that uh, he could build a building there. And 
walked up to the to the top of the cliff there one afternoon with with the architect and uh, there was a group of students sitting there studying at one spot you know the view out there at St. Helens and the river and said you know they've picked the spot. <laughs> Art was not the bridge engineer on this bridge behind us, but he was a really important player. He was appointed by TriMet to this uh, uh, sort of an advisory committee that was led by Mayor Katz, and they selected the most uh, intelligent people they could find to advise them on how this bridge would be uh, constructed, what kind of bridge it would be, and so Art was the person in the room that really brought a different perspective, not only a technical perspective, but uh, knew how to ask all the right questions of the bridge design team. I think this space is a great place to talk about art because he is sort of present all around us in the sense that his firm designed this building, the engineering building at uh, Portland State, and that building, the uh, City of Portland Department of Building Services, and his firm uh, contributed somewhat to the engineering of this sculpture. So really art is behind it all. As far as doing work with a client, I would do all their work. Not just their big projects, not just their little projects, not just schools or whatever. Um, you know, so everything I do, I try to do the best I possibly can. He must understand the soul of the artist or he wouldn't allow projects like mine to be engineered at KPFF because mine are not bringing any revenue to the firm. That, that, that's clear. I, mine are these little tiny projects compared to these giant buildings that they're engineering. And so the fees are, are minuscule. One of my favorite, it's not a building, is the stair in ZGS new office. If you look at that as an engineer, it, it is very unique. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it, every time I go into their office, I feel proud that I had something to do with it. They call it Art Stare, so. <laughs> <laughs> Without uh, a skilled engineering team as Art had, uh, you wouldn't see what you see today. The floating walkway, the cantilever walkways, the kinds of structure that hold that bank up that no one is really aware of. Uh, it's hard to appreciate all that went into it. And he's one of those engineers that's not mired in the details. He really gets the big picture. He understands livability. He understands what Portland is about. My dad died of prostate cancer. Uh, my wife had very, very serious breast cancer, which she's a survivor. Uh, my brother and I both have prostate cancer. I've got a bunch of grandsons. <laughs> so that had something to, something to do with it. Quiet guy, he was very passionate about what we do, very passionate about uh, what it means to be a cancer patient, a cancer survivor, and what we all have to do to make sure that uh, there are many more survivors tomorrow than there are today. He just has no ego. He gets right to the point. He knows what to do. He guides the board. He's made great connections. And he's very passionate about the cancer research that Providence is doing. Art doesn't talk about himself. Art isn't full of himself. Art is absolutely as humble as anyone I've ever met in my life. I learned about Art's abilities from other people, not from Art. They did the skywalk, the structural engineering for how we can have the from the parking lot over here in the front of the Cancer Center, which is sort of a unique uh, entrance and it makes it a special place. And.